Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is Minister Paul out here in Northern California. I want to start off in prayer. We're going to go into Galatians 5. I can do all thanks to Christ who strengthens me. Father God, I come boldly to your throne in the name of Jesus Christ. My intercessor, my Lord, my Savior, I know my Redeemer lives. We come to you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, the anointed Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Let your peace fall upon us, Father God, in a way that the world can't understand. Let every add a blessing to this world. And my prayer is that everybody receive your peace, not peace like the world gives, but this peace I'm feeling right now, Father God, in your presence, Lord. Lord, anoint our eyes and ears to see and reveal to us the hidden secrets and your wisdom and knowledge from above and help us today as we put you first in everything. We need your help down here, Lord Jesus. Bless, the, bless everyone that hears this word according to your will. We live to please you, Father God, and we need your help today. Amen. Go right into it. it. says, I'll put a link. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty which Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Bondage will hamper your walk with God. It will ensnare you in traps. You will literally be yoked up. Um, the Bible says, be not unequally yoked. That, that references a lot of things, not just marriage. So... Just quickly in verse 1, it, it speaks volumes. It says, Christ gave us liberty that he made us free on the cross. And when he rose, he made us free. And then he says, don't go back to the bondage you were in. What bondage has he been speaking of in Galatians 1, 2, 3, and 4, and Romans? And I'll give you cross-reference scriptures. We're going to break this down today. The bondage of the law. And it's, there's so many people that dispute this, it's what I call one of the great debates. Just Google, uh, is the law bondage? And you'll see it 50-50. Some say it is, some say it isn't. I'm just going to read the word of God after prayer, line upon line, and precept upon precept, and, and ask God to reveal this to it. He promises to. Jesus Christ wrote this. You need to know that. And he was in the beginning. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Now, what is he talking about? What has Apostle Paul been preaching to Galatia about? Be of set free from the law. Um, in the, and under the new covenant, Jesus Christ said, he said, uh, I fulfilled the law. I wrote it upon your hearts. I'm going to give you some cross uh, cross scriptures here and cross references. So what he's saying here in verse two is, look, notice, take notice that I, the apostle Paul, who tells you that if you receive circumcision, Christ will be of no advantage to you at all. And it's like distrusting him. You can gain nothing from him because you're, you're not you're not receiving the liberty that he gave you when he set you free from the curse of the law. What, shall I then go on sinning? No, God forbid, Apostle Paul says. But he makes it very clear, chapter after chapter, line upon line, that keeping the law will not get you to heaven. The only way to salvation is through what Christ did on the cross and rose again. Anybody saying otherwise is teaching a false doctrine. Don't take my word for it. Go prayer in your prayer closet again over and over and again until God speaks to you. For I, verse 3, for I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. In other words, you're in debt in bondage to the law. Could it be any more clear? Another uh, translation says, I once more protest and testify to every man or woman who receives circumcision that he is now under obligation and bound to practice 
the whole of the law and its ordinances. In other words, you got to either keep all the law, you got to burn sheep, um, you can't eat uh, unclean foods, you got to tithe, you got to do all of that. You can't be a hypocrite and just do the ones you like and teach the ones you like. You either do all the law or accept the liberty and freedom from Christ because you will be judged by the law. And you know what the Bible says? The law is cursed. It's a curse. Remember we just read about that? It's not my words. It's the authorized King James. Verse 4, Christ has become a no effect to you whosoever you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. Read that again, verse 4. Christ has become of no effect in you whatsoever. You are justified by the law. See, you're redeemed by Christ. The law can't redeem you. The law can't justify you. It talks about Romans and 8, that you're justified by grace. Unmerited favor that you can't work for or earn or keep no law for. It's only the belief and what Jesus did on the Day of Atonement. Five, for we, your, another, word, another thing it says, I'm just gonna hammer this home. If you, if you continue to teach this, you're accursed and fallen from grace. You know, I, I was gonna try to make this 15 minutes. I'm gonna go as long as I want. I just feel the Holy Spirit telling me how important this is to get out. If you seek to be justified and declared righteous, and to be given a right standing, remember I said, I've said this often, righteousness means to be in right standing with God, is the Greek definition. If you, if you seek to be justified and declared righteous with God through the law, you are brought to nothing and you have been separated or severed from Christ. That's the living Bible. Some people said that's not of God. Oh, really? Go tell God that. Not me. I don't want to hear it. I'm departing from unfruitful works of darkness, and I'm leaning on the word. I'm going to trust in the Lord in all my might and lean on, not on my own understanding. In all my ways, I'm going to acknowledge him, not people. And he, Jesus, will direct my paths. That's a promise. Anybody have a, a link, scripture for that, reference and all that? So you have fallen away from grace, which is from God's gracious favor and unmerited blessings. Unmerited in it as you didn't earn it. Let's just give it to you. Verse 6, verse 5. For we through the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit of God, the Ruach HaKadosh. And I must caution people to stop speaking against the Ruach HaKadosh. Please. For we through the Spirit, capital S, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. So how do we wait? For the hope of righteousness by faith, not by keeping the law. Can it be any more clear? Let me give you some cross references. I'm going to keep up. I got three different Bibles open. Okay, for verse 1, Philippians 4 1 and Philippians 2 4 and Acts 15 10. For verse 2, Acts 15 1. For verse 4, when you're following from grace, Romans 9 31 and 2 Peter 3 17. For verse 5, it's Romans 8.24. For verse 6, it's 1 Corinthians 7.19. For verse 7, it's 1 Corinthians 9.24. For verse 9, a little leaven, leaven the whole lump, it's 1 Corinthians 5.6. Please read all of that, and don't just take my word for it. Read this for yourself. I'm just a messenger. I'm nothing without Christ Jesus, but he did redeem me, and I know who I am in him, and you should too. For... For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Where's the love, saints? People fighting against each other and they're both claiming to love God. How could this be? Apostle Paul's saying, and I'm saying. Verse 7, you did run well who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth. So what is the truth? What has he been teaching this whole book? Grace, not the law. Faith, not works. And then everybody will say, faith by works. Uh, faith without works is dead. I know, but we're, these are works that I'm doing right now. You want to know the evidence 
of works done under faith, you simply go to Hebrew 11. The whole chapter names everybody and what they did by faith. It's not a condemning scripture that they use it to like hurt other people with. It says the just shall live by faith. But that has nothing to do with salvation. You could go out, go out and do good works for the rest of your life. You can't be nice your way to heaven. You can't keep the law into heaven. You can't work your way into heaven. You can only get to heaven through grace. That's it. Okay, so let me read that. We're at now uh, verse 8. Let me read something. Okay, it says, For if we are in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision accounts for anything. In other words, keeping law does not account for anything. But only faith activated and energized and expressed and working through love. You were running the race nobly. Who has interfered in and hindered and stopped you from he your heeding and following the truth? Apostle Paul asked to the church. Verse 8, this evil persuasion is not from him who called you, who invited you to freedom in Christ. In other words, that didn't come from him. Whatever, whoever's telling you that is referred to as evil. And then verse 9 says, and notice again, they reference that you were invited to freedom in Christ. A lot of people, they found, they claim that they found Christ and they boast and brag and pride. And they don't even realize it, that it's only mercy and grace. It's nothing they did. It, the truth is Christ finds us. We don't find him. How many people here don't know that you were chosen by God? You were chosen by God. Uh, verse 8 says, This evil persuasion is not from him who called you invited in Christ. Verse 9 says, A little leaven uh, uh, leavens the whole lump. Now let, let me break that down for you in the translation you can understand. A little leaven, uh, in other words, this is doctrine. A slight inclination to err, or just a couple of false teachers, leavens the whole lump. In other words, it says in Greek, it says it perverts the whole conception of faith and misleads the entire church. False teaching, false doctrine of law, and say under the law and not grace, perverts the conception of why we need faith. And again, if you want to know about faith, go to Hebrews 11, and you're misleading the whole church. This is not a call-out video. What am I doing? We're reading the word. We're sticking to the word. Here we go. I'm going to break this down. Let's go to uh, verse 10. I have... Confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment. He's trying to edify them and, and tell them, look, the people that are given this false teaching will be judged according to their false teaching. Verse 11, and I, brethren, in other words, brothers and sisters in the Lord, and he's writing this to believers in a church, not to sinners in a bar. Take note of that. If I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer per persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased? I would that they were even cut off, which trouble you. 11 and 12. This may take a while. I'm going through every verse. But brethren, if I still preach circumcision, and then Amplified says, as some accuse me of doing, as uh, necessary to, to salvation. In other words, the law is necessary for salvation. Then why am I still suffering persecution? In that case, the cross has ceased to be a stumbling block and is made meaningless. You're doing away with the finished work of the cross in verse 11. And 12 said, I wish those who unsettled and confused you would all go all the way and just cut themselves off. 13, for you, brethren, were indeed called to freedom. How many times has he said freedom and liberty through grace and faith? Only do not let your freedom be an incentive to your flesh or an opportunity or excuse for selfishness, but through love you should serve one another. In other words, don't let this liberty of freedom Christ gave you by grace have caused you to feel like you have this freedom to go out and have a license to sin. 
Now let's break this down in the authorized King James and let's go to uh, 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. In other words, you sin in, in when you get into the flesh. You got to stay in love and ministering to one another or serving one another. 14, when I watch very closely, authorized King James 1611 Bible. For all, repeat after me, for all the law, say it, is fulfilled in one word. This is Christ Jesus we're talking about in the Holy Spirit, Yeshua HaMashiach and the Ruach HaKadosh, making it very clear. Let's say it again. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And the world goes around in Jesus' name, hating each other and hurting each other. They're a stumbling block. They don't even realize that's bad leaven and you're lumping in the whole lump. You're, you're become a stumbling block to the whole church. And who is the church? Christ's people that he chose. Remember that. 15. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. You understand this? Is anybody getting this? Say amen, type amen. Fall on your knees, shout holy. But if you bite and devour one another in partisan and in strife, be careful that you and your whole fellowship, your whole ministry, are not consumed by one another. 16. We're almost getting there. I'm in no hurry. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So how can you keep from falling in the flesh now that you've been set free of the liberty in Christ Jesus? You've been set free. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. You're either free or you're in yoke to bondage, to sin and the law. So how do you keep from sinning now that you've been shown mercy and grace and redeemed and saved through the finished work on the cross? Hey, I'll call you right back, okay? Okay, buddy. Love you. Sorry about that. My wife. I'm not sorry, actually. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. I repent, Lord. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. See, you got to put Jesus Christ first in everything. Spouse, friends, everything. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. She knows when I say that, I'm, I'm, I'm in the word. Putting Jesus first, even in front of her. Then I'll call her back, tell her how much I love her. First things first. For the flesh lusts us against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. He repeated himself from Romans uh, 6 and 7. Not what I would to do not, I find myself doing. We're, it's a war out there. And you ain't going to win it by keeping no laws. The only way to win this Ephesians 6, uh, War is to realize that Christ already wrote Satan's finish and he nailed your sins to the cross. Why is it so hard for people to understand that Christ died for you and that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens him, but you can't do it under the law? You've been set free from the curse of the law because cursed is him that hung on a tree, it says. Okay, eight. But if you led, but if you be led of the Spirit, you are not mind blower. Eighteen. But if you are led, if you be led of the Spirit, in other words, if you let the Holy Spirit lead you after you're saved and redeemed and set free and at liberty and have freedom, Hallelujah! Says you are not under the law. How much clearer could that be? But if you be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Galatians five eighteen. I want to shout it from the rooftops. So the whole world will hear it. Like and share this video out and let people know you're, you're teaching about loving. You're, you, there's a way that seems right into a man or woman whose end result is destruction. You're teaching something I can't keep. None of us can keep the law. That's why Jesus had to, lo to die. And he said, I give you a new commandment. Love. Do you, is anybody hear me? Am I preaching to myself? This is the word of God. It's holy. Holy. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I feel the fire coming on my 19. 19, let's go. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Okay, here's some works of the flesh. Adultery, fornication. In other words, 
cheating on your spouse after you're married, or fornication, having sex before marriage, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Let's look up lasciviousness. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. Do you know hatred is a work of the flesh and it's ungodly? Lasciviousness is given to or expressing lust, exciting sexual des desires. Okay, if you're doing that, that's a sin and you need to repent. Because why? It's a work of the flesh, not a work of the spirit. Repent. Hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions. Let's look up some. I know what sedition is. Let me look up emulations. Envy and murders, drunkenness, revelings. You know, in other words, fighting. Let's look up a couple words here. Emulations. Come on now. I turned my phone off, man. For real. I'm turning my phone off. When you start trying to teach the truth, Satan will throw everything he has at you. But he put all things under our feet. Made us the head and not the tail. Emulation. Hmm. Yeah. Obsolete, ambitious, or envious rivalry. Ambition or endeavor to equal or excel others. In other words, to try to go out and embark on being better than others. The use of a technique. Okay, let me go back to... Seditions. We all know what witchcraft is. An idol tree is putting anything in front of God. Heresies. Let's look up a sedition. These are works of the flesh. I'm not on a clock today. The crime of saying, writing, listen to me, it's a crime. You know how I knew what sedition was? It's because it's on the list of things that you can be charged with after you go in the military. You have to take an oath and you have to, this is a very serious crime, even under the law of the government in the USA. Listen, sedition. The crime of saying, writing or doing something that encourages people to disobey their government. In other words, trying to incite people to riot, to turn against their government. And you know, you can get the death penalty for that. Well, whose kingdom are we living in? We're not of this world, we're of the kingdom of God. So doing that is a work of the flesh. It's a sin. Heresies, let's look up heresies. I'm gonna take my time with this. Oh, man, I really feel this unction in my spirit. Heresy. A belief. You ever heard of a heretic? And people say, oh, he's a heretic. A belief or opinion that does not agree with the official belief or opinion of Christianity. So if you, if you have an opinion or a belief, a, a denial of the revealed truth, an opinion... Or doctrine teached that's contrary to the Word of God descent or deviation okay let's move on everybody got that murders envying reveling and such like of the which I tell you before as I have told you in the past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God so if you walk that way and live that way, it says, Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not covet, thou shalt have no other uh, gods before me. That's still valid. The Ten Commandments is still valid. If you break those, it's a work of the flesh. But the mercy and grace part is, some people teach like, you can't be forgiven under that. Well, Christ says you can you can be forgiven uh, right up into the moment Christ returns. That's how I believe. That's how I teach. That's how I preach. Otherwise, Christ died in vain. But I wouldn't wait. Nobody has a license to sin. And the best way I, the Bible teaches to stay out of works of the flesh is to operate in love. That's why Christ Jesus when they came to test Christ Jesus, he said, what is the greatest commandment? He said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all my heart, all my soul, and all my mind. 
and, and he said, uh, and he said, I give you a new commandment to love your brother and sister like I love the church. Some people call that the 11th commandment. <laughs> um, anyway, pray on this, please. So you can't inherit the kingdom of God in the flesh. And those are sins. But let, let's talk about operating in the spirit. See, he's, he's trying to tell the church the difference between operating in the flesh and operating in the spirit exactly like he did to the Romans. But the fruit of the spirit, in other words, if you're full of the whole spirit, you look. If you're full of the flesh, you're gonna um, you're gonna bear bad fruit: sin, murder, hatred, envy, and fighting, mocking, attacking. You're gonna bear bad fruit: stealing, all these things, putting other things before God, living for the world. But if you're full of the Holy Spirit and you're operating in love and you follow Christ. The fruit you're going to bear in your life, in other words, the things that you're going to produce in your life, are love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Let's look up temperance. Being level-headed, I would assume, but I don't like to assume stuff. Temperance is, okay, this is good, see? Yeah, always, con always in control of your actions, thoughts, or feelings. Uh, and then it says, so as you don't eat or drink too much or become too angry, etc. Moderation in action, thought, or feeling. It's even the practice of drinking little or no alcohol. And everybody say, amen. You're not going to drink your way to heaven. <laughs> so, but, but of all these fruits of the Spirit we walk in because of the blood, shed blood of Jesus and his redemption plan and his promise that we can receive the Holy Spirit and his promise to you too. It says, there is, verse 23, there is no law. Go ahead, read it for yourself, verse 23, Galatians 5 and 24. And they that are Christ's, please listen, have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. So we just defined what the affection is and the, the lust. That's been crucified with Christ. Apostle Paul said, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. If we could just get that down, that we're free and set free by Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. And we can walk in love instead of hatred. Walk in peace instead of anger. Walk in freedom instead of fear. Walk in faith instead of doubt. We could do that. But you must be born again. And there's a lot of people out here teaching and preaching bad leaven, false doctrine. You know what? They haven't been born again. Rather than attack them, let's pray for them. 24, and coming to a close here. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. He says this in Romans also, he's crucified with Christ. 25, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of uh, vain glory, or let's not provoke one another or envy one another. You know, it says don't provoke people to wrath. I'm going to uh, read 21 and 22 in the Living Bible. Envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. I warn you beforehand, just as I did previously, see he's already told him this, that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which his presence within accomplishes, love, joy, gladness, for peace, for joy, peace, patience, and even temper, forbearance, Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, humility, self-control, self-restraint. Against such things there is no law. So no one can bring a charge against you when you do those things. 24. And those who belong to Christ Jesus, the anointed Messiah, have crucified the flesh. And that's defined as the godless human nature with its passions and appetites and desires. I feel the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us through this word. 
If we live by the Holy Spirit, let us also walk by the Holy Spirit. If by the Holy Spirit we have our life in God, let us go forward walking in line in our conduct controlled by the Holy Spirit. Let us not become vainglorious and self-conceited, full of pride, competitive and challenging and provoking and irritating to one another, envying and being jealous of one another. Can we do that today? It's going to take a lot of prayer. I'm here to tell you, I'll be the first one in line to say, Lord Jesus, it's not easy. But we make things too hard. We need to be led by the Holy Spirit. God bless you all. I hope somehow that this word of God, I don't hope, I know this word of God will speak to you. The word works when you work the word. Don't just be hearers of the word, be doers of the word. We are not living in the flesh under the law. We're living in the spirit under grace. Um, the last chapter will be chapter six. God bless you all and know that you are loved by the one who created everything.